Hello, everyone, and welcome to the inaugural. Oh, wow. We have already set the tone. Let's just move on as if... um as if I did uh, graduate university, which I did. But I want to welcome you. (laughs) Oh, dear God. I'm leaving this in. I'm leaving this in. Hello, everyone. I am Stacey McGonigal, and welcome to the first ever episode of my brand new podcast called Indulge Me. Indulge Me is a weekly podcast where I will be telling you all of the who's, the what's, the where's, and the why's that I think you need to know about. Consider it like all of the obsessions that I have that I feel will benefit your life. And if you know me personally, you know that my sort of like secret superhuman power is recommendations. I I want to get you into things. I want to get you watching things. I want to get you using things, wearing things, and eating things. I've done the research and I need you to come aboard. So every week we're going to be talking about different things. And yes, will I be discussing cold plunging? Of course. Has everyone at my job told me I'm not allowed to talk about it anymore? Of course. But I'm not at that job. I'm in my home where I have my breakfast. Now, there will be a video component. I'm filming it right now. What a delight. What a delight it is, I have to tell you, to curl your thin ass hair to then sit where you just wolf down an everything bagel only to see it in the camera completely flat. It is a sight for everyone's eyes. I dare you not to fall in love. I dare you not to fall in love. I hope you keep on serving Count. <laughs> yeah, um, we're definitely going to be serving that. Thank you, Countess. Uh, we're going to be doing our best here, but I'm really excited. I've been thinking about doing a podcast again, and um, if you've followed me from Regular Girls or The Regulars, um, we really took a leap with the name. Thank you for following. Uh, Thank you for listening. I'm so glad that you're here. But I've been missing it. I've been missing podcasting. And a solo venture seems so scary. Not in the sense of like, what will I say? Because I don't think I've ever run out of something to say. I think it was just, what will I talk about? And I think I really really overthought it. Don't we all? Oh, don't we all overthink? Oh, we overthink it so much. It's so embarrassing. I was talking to a friend recently um, and I'm going to have her on the podcast because what she's currently doing is so wild, but she was going to a silent meditation retreat, which I just thought was quite the experience to embark on. So I'm excited to hear her thoughts when she's back. But we were talking and I was just like, I was saying to her that when you're called to do something, when you're called to do something wild or you feel inspired, there is a part of you that just sort of has to push past the embarrassment of doing it, if that makes sense. Like as an actor, I think I struggle in many ways because it is embarrassing to do that. because we are adults that are pretending and that is really an insecure place to be. But I'm sure everyone feels really embarrassed or nervous when they're starting new things. So um, I'm asking all of us in this first episode to just push past the point of embarrassment. You know, we just got to keep on serving. I hope you keep on serving cunt. <laughs> keep on serving cunt, 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 cunt. Keep on serving cunt, 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 cunt. <laughs> that song, in the way that it has changed my life. Thank you. So yes, we're going to push past the point of embarrassment. I have dusted off the old podcasting equipment and um, man, was it dusty. And I'm excited to get um, into it. I can already hear a man telling me to clean it with a microfiber cloth. Can't you, can't you hear when I say something's dusty, like electronics? I cleaned it with a paper towel. What do you say to that? Every man I've ever known who tells me that's not the proper way to clean technology and to get a microfiber cloth. What is with men obsessed with microfiber cloths? What is that? Were they born with that? Why were they aware of that? I didn't know about a microfiber cloth until my first boyfriend. And that was late in life. As a late bloomer to men, I was a late bloomer to microfiber cloths. And yes, I own them now, but they get weird in the dryer and they feel funny and I don't want to use them all the time. So much like how I refuse to drink water sometimes just to feel in control, today I did not clean with the microfiber cloth. And am I regretting it? Slightly. Slightly. Okay, Joanne? Slightly. But we will move on with the little nuggets of white gunk that are all over my podcasting board. And let's just move on. I'm so excited for Indulge Me. Like I said, I love telling people what to do. 
I just, I, I do. And I was overthinking this podcast for so long because, you know, you get on TikTok or you get on YouTube and everyone's like, what's your niche? What are you going to talk about? And I was just like, I don't know. I just like to tell people what to do. If I first met you, I can guarantee in the first 15 minutes, once I find out what our common denominator is, is it reality TV? Is it skincare products? Is it, you know, the, you know, fun pants at Old Navy? Where do we both stand? you damn well best believe that I'm going to be giving you a recommendation. So on today's episode, it's a little bit of reality TV and it's a little bit of skincare. We're just dipping a toe in ep one. Okay. We're not going to overthink. And I made notes because if you're watching this on video, I got an iPad. I got a freaking iPad. And let me tell you, I get it. To every mom, to every aunt, to every grandmother with large text print, I get it. I get the love of the iPad. Now you're probably sitting here listening to this or watching this and maybe you're on the fence about an iPad. Do I need it? I already have a laptop. I also said, no, get an iPad. Oh, get an iPad. The way this thing has changed my life, the way this iPad has changed my life, the iPad time that you are about to embark on is like none other. Okay. This is a tablet of indulgence. There is no work happening on this iPad. I took some notes for this, for this podcast, but there is but no work going on in this iPad. I have the pencil. Have I written a couple of journal entries and forgotten? Of course, but the iPad, oh, to scroll on YouTube. Oh, to like mindlessly scroll on TikTok. It is my time. Let me paint the picture. It's nine o'clock. You've just gotten out of the shower. You are putting on your serums, your LED skin mask. I don't know why I said skin mask. I meant face mask. We are going to be talking about that later in the episode. Okay. You put on your serums. You're in robe. Oh, you're in robe. You've got a water, lemon, spice it up. You're in your bed. You slip under the covers, fresh sheets, let's say. You reach, you grab for your iPad, and then you just drift into YouTube or TikTok. Oh my God. I hope you keep on serving cunt. <laughs> and you will. That is a Luan Deliceps guarantee that you will. This iPad has changed my life. It has changed my life. My boyfriend will be sitting on the couch sometimes and be like, hey, do you want to watch something? No. No, I reply staunchly, confidently, both feet firmly on the ground in my confidence. No, I need some iPad time. I am a toddler. Happy to be there. Happy to be there. I just want my, I want my iPad and I want my puffs. And I don't mean marijuana. I, you know, I mean like those corn puffs, like those kids have all the kids eating their puffs. They're good. They're good. Get an iPad. If you're on the fence, if you're on the fence about it, all of the women in my life who knew I was in the space of should I, or should I not get an iPad? They pushed me. They urged me. They said, get one. You will not regret it. And I want to thank those women. And I want to thank my ears and my brain for, for going for it. It. I literally said my mouth and my brain and then drifted off. So there we are um, mentally where I'm at. But I want to thank those women. They saw me. They heard me. They knew me. And now I'm saying it to you. If you are on the fence get the iPad. I have the iPad Air. You don't need anything else than that. You're not a graphic designer, Cheryl. If you did, if you were, you would already have one. Okay. Get the iPad Air. Get the iPad Air because financially, if you get a regular iPad, sure. But just put, just, if you got room to grow, grow, just get the iPad air. And you know what? I don't have the magic keyboard. I just have the, the, um, the flimsy one or it's not flimsy. It's good, but you know what I mean? Anyways, I don't need to get into a tech review about it. Okay. What do I have on my docket? The first thing I want to get into, I would be remiss if we didn't touch base on this, but it is past the prime and that is Vanderpump rules. Oh, have we been through it? Oh, have we just been through it? What a time that was. I know for some of you that have reached out to me on Instagram and listen, I say Instagram, okay? Because I'm doing, t I'm doing TikToks. I'm talking, I'm ticking, okay? And the views aren't there. The community is not there yet. Um, on Instagram, I know there was a huge discourse. We were getting into it in the DMs about it. Okay. It's, I dare I say, okay, I'm all over the place. Let's start from the beginning. I love reality TV. I am not scared to say I watch TV. I'm not scared to say I watch reality TV. Okay. I, I watch it more than I read. I do have a couple of books on my bedside table that I like to look at as I get into my bed and grab my iPad, but I love reality TV. And I was once described as a reality TV sommelier. Can you even? 
Can you even? It is true. I love reality TV. I have watched all genres, all types. I was even watching reality TV on Spike TV. Remember that? Yeah. Bar Rescue, Ink Master. Okay. Ink Master LA. I watched all of that um, and more. So I've been watching it all. I've been watching all the TLCs. I, I was even watching a baby story. Do you remember that? A baby story on TLC where they like followed a woman's journey to birth. And I was like nine. And I remember so vividly watching a baby story and being like, oh, this is a rerun. Like that's how much I watched a baby story. I was like, oh, I remember Denise and Brian and the the tensions of their marriage. And oh, she's got the baby. I hope it fixes it like they all thought it would. You know, so I know reality TV. And I love to give suggestions. Of course, I like to think of it like a sommelier. I like to give the suggestions based on behavior and characteristics that I see. And Vanderpump Rules, I would say, is true canon of reality television. These people were actually friends. They're real friends. They really worked at the restaurant and the restaurant was owned by Lisa Vanderpump um, from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And she has this restaurant called Sir where they all worked. Sexy, unique restaurant. If you hear my dog gurgling and growling, it's because he's laying on his back luxuriating in his bed. And I'm not gonna be upset with him about that. In fact, I'm gonna encourage it. I want us all to just thrash our backs into our bed and just luxuriate in the comforts that we've created. Plus he's deaf and old and like, let's just let him live. Anyways, so Vanderpump Rules, they all worked at this restaurant and they were all friends and they were all having sex with each other and they were all doing drugs and they were all drinking too much and it was all real. Now, that has been on for 10 seasons. I would say the last couple of seasons have not been good. I have not watched them. I've like peeked in or watched a few episodes because I respect my Hey You account. But this last season has got me back because of the scandal of it all. If you don't know Vanderpump Rules, here's a quick synopsis. Couple on the show, Tom and Ariana, they were together for, you know, almost 10 years. And Tom ends up having an affair with one of Ariana's good friends, Raquel. And it blows up at the end of the season. It comes out that there's been an affair. They pick up the cameras and they start shooting again. So the whole season, you're watching it knowing there's an affair. So we all felt like detectives. TikTok is truly the place to go. Like, honestly, like the people that that pick up cues and find little Easter eggs and like little like rabbit holes. I applaud you. I have lost hours of my life, years of my life at this point, watching your research. So thank you for that. Anyways, Vanderpump Rules spiced it up with this affair. And I think we all glommed onto it because we needed something as a community to get behind. Succession was done. Okay. White Lotus was done. We knew who died at the end. We now know, you know, the sad ending to succession, which if I think about it too long will ruin my week. And now I think as a society, we needed to glom onto something salacious and light. And we found it in Vanderpump Rules. If you're looking for a reality TV show, I would highly recommend Vanderpump Rules, but only only if you love like fighting, um, slight smacking around of best friends, just absolute devastation, ethical morality being put into question, carpeted apartments. It's, it's a lot of screaming. It's a lot of anger. So if that makes you uncomfortable, then you can just go and watch Below Deck like everybody else, um, which I love Below Deck. I have been a fan since season one. I also would say season one of Below Deck might be one of the tops as well. I know I I got a lot of people into Below Deck after watching that first season, but this is where the reality TV MVPs really stand out. It's when they're actually friends. And I feel like we're moving in a way where reality TV is just strangers coming together. And that is the sauce that we do not want. I got lost there in the sentence, but Vanderpump Rules worked because they were all actually friends. Below Deck season one really works because they were really yachties. Shaws of Sunset. They were friends. Um, the first seasons of Real Housewives, they were actually friends or they knew of each other in the social circles in which they worked. Summer House, first, first two seasons, they were actually friends who got summer houses together. In Montauk, I believe, it wasn't the hand, it was Montauk. So it's like when you move away from that and you just start adding cast members, that's where things get murky and strange. And the only caveat really is Vanderpump Rules where Raquel ingratiated herself and by dating DJ James Kennedy, they get engaged. And then she became like a real 
point in the show. So it was a more authentic than just like, hey, hey, everyone in season nine of Vanderpump Rules, this girl's named Charlie and she works at the restaurant. That was a tangent, but go with me. It makes sense and I'm right. Reality TV can only really work if they're friends. If it's a competition show, sure, they can all be strangers. But if you want to like talk about, if you want to show based on a group of people, they need to have, they need to be real friends. That's why I'm concerned about the Real Housewives of New York re-franchise, or what is it called? Not a re-franchise. Oh God, I can like hear people yelling from their headphones at me. The update with the new cast, I'm I'm wondering how much they actually know each other. I'm worried. And that's why I can see Bravo wanting to do the legacy show because, you know, Sonia, Luann, Dorinda, like all of these gals together make sense. They know each other. They have a history, okay? Luann got so drunk and she fell into a bush in Mexico. She had sex with a pirate. She brought a strange man into their condo once to have sex with him in the middle of the night and people got upset. This is years and years of knowing each other. That's why we like it. I hope you keep on serving cunt. <laughs> and you will, girl, and I know that about you. But here are my quick rapid fire thoughts about the reunion. I know we're over it. I know we're over it. But here they are, nonetheless. I would be remiss. Okay, Shannon, I'd be remiss. Spell that. I can't. Can you help me? Anyways. Obviously, Tom Sandoval is gross. We all know Tom Sandoval is gross. He's a loser. He's poo-poo. He's pee-pee. He's all the things in between. No one likes Tom Sandoval. And especially now where he's like in his cover band at like state fairs or whatever, singing about Schwartz's mom. He's like changing the lyrics to like lame songs to include cast members' names. It's like, no, thank you. That being said, I didn't love the reunions because... There was no opportunity for him to dig himself deeper. Like Tom Sandoval is a massive liar. I know a lot of people are saying he's a narcissist, but like he's a massive liar. He was obviously covering up this affair. He was obsessed with saying that him and Raquel only slept together once, which we all knew was a lie. But I wanted to hear more from him. But all we got was like everyone jumping on him the second he said something like Lala and James. And they were funny and they were great, but it's like they weren't super directly involved. Like, you know, I know like Lala obviously is like broken up with Randall, you know, her her like ex fiance and like he cheated and he's a criminal and he's a crook allegedly, allegedly, but like, you know, don't sue me. It's not about me. So leave me alone. I'm just a girl in a fun shirt. But I just was like, shut up. They were just too much. They were just too much. And I needed Andy to be like, you, you guys need to shut up. You need to shut up. Um, Cause I wanted to hear from him more. I also wanted more of Raquel. I know that she put the restraining order with Sheena up. So like her and Sheena couldn't be in the same room. I, I didn't love that we only got reunion part three with her. And I wanted Andy to ask more questions. It was clear that Tom Sandoval had like coached her. So she wasn't sure what to say. And there was a lot of looks and a lot of like, you could tell she was lying and you could tell Tom is an idiot and thinks that his lies are good. So yeah, I was just wishing and hoping that people would shut the hell up. <sighs> Don't come at me, okay? Because facts are facts. Now, I just finished watching The Secrets Revealed, which is the um, episode that they always play after the uh, part three reunion where they show scenes that were never aired. And I got to tell you, there were so many scenes that I think needed to be on the show. First of all, I keep saying first of all, and listen, it's the first episode. So let a theme be a theme. I think after watching The Secrets Revealed, I think Katie and Tom Schwartz deserved more storyline. They had just gone through a divorce. They were also living together during that divorce. I wanted to see more of that. I mean, as a divorcee myself, that's interesting content to know. Um, it's, you know, it's something that you can relate to and see. And I felt like all Katie got was like her being mad at Schwartz because he kissed Raquel, but she was dating people. She was seeing people. I wanted more of her story. And again, it's known I'm not the biggest Katie fan. I've seen on TikTok that people say, if you don't like Katie, then you're like a terrible person. And to that, I say, ouch, my feelings are hurt and I have to boundary that. But having watched every single season of Vanderpump Rules, yes, she was in a shitty relationship with Schwartz, with Schwartz, sorry. But like Katie luxuriated in meanness. And listen, we talk shit. I have a podcast right now where I'm talking shit. I'm not like opposed to that. Nothing's better than like a glass of wine and like talking full shit, you know? You. Thanks, Dorinda. But Katie's mean. Katie was mean and she's allowed to evolve. And I really wanted to see 
her storyline this season. Like I wanted my mind to be changed about Katie, especially because when she was saying that she chose herself and she wanted herself to be happy and she was tired of waiting for a man to like love her and to grow up. Like, you know, we all feel that. We've all dated a, you know, a Davy dirt bag or whatever they call them. So I wanted more from Katie and I felt that she got really shortchanged. I do. Now here's something that I want to share because we're friends and I'm willing to be brave and unpack this and let's just say it. And I know, and I, and I know there, be, there have been people in my DMs who have agreed with me and we're not happy about it and, and we're not proud about it. Okay. So, but this is an honesty tunnel. Okay. Where I'm, I want to be clear. I'm attracted to Tom Schwartz. The angels, um, they're singing, but they're not happy, you know? Oh, he, it's not, it doesn't say anything good about me. It doesn't say anything good about me. I find him attractive. I have empathy for him. I know I should not. I know it should not. Let me explain. And if, and if you have judgment quandaries, queries, send them my way. Send them my way to me. Um, and we will get into it. I'll answer. I'm, I'm, I'm happy and open to have a boundary, respectable discourse. Okay. Tom Schwartz, I listened to him on the, and I'm not proud of this either, the Jackson Brittany podcast. Okay. I listen to that. I'm working for all of you. I'm I'm listening to the shenanigans Sheena Shea podcast, Give Them Lala podcast. I'm doing Jackson Brittany. I was even doing Nick Vile, that podcast, which we have to talk about in a later episode because something's going on there that's not bad. I'm liking it. Let me talk about Schwartz as a whole. Then we'll get into Schwartz in Scandaval because that's where the Jackson Brittany thing come in. So Schwartz as a whole is a baby boy, is a baby boy who never wants to grow up, who's like a little man baby who never wants to speak up or speak in a full sentence period or have thoughts that are his own because the ramifications of someone being upset with him are devastating. And it was interesting that he was with Katie because Katie, the whole relationship needed him to have her back. And in some ways I would agree with Schwartz with some things where I was like, Katie, this is like undefensible. This is indefensible stuff. But in some ways also, I think we all see ourselves in Katie and in relationships where you're like needing someone to have your back and they just don't. So I don't think Schwartz is like a perfect guy. I think he needs to grow up. He's super flawed. I mean, if you look at his apartment this current season, oh, wowie zowie. Uh, no, thank you. I'll tell you how I'm doing. Not well, bitch. I wish that he had just said that like the whole season because you would see like corners of his apartment where you'd be seeing him like doing push-ups with like dirty socks around and I was happy he was moving his body but I wasn't happy how how he was moving it and where okay so Schwartz is like I understand I know he's not good and I know it says a lot about me that I'm attracted to him and his glasses but when he pops those on and he dresses a little preppy it makes me feel something that's all I'm gonna say and that I'm gonna say more now Tom Schwartz in relation to Scandaval is interesting because obviously he was covering for his friend. Obviously he knew for a long time, but he was saying on the Jackson Brittany podcast that in his life, I guess like his dad was in the hospital and had like suffered a massive injury and they didn't know if he was going to make it. His other brother was diagnosed with cancer. His other brother was in rehab and he was going through a lot of family stuff and this divorce and trying to open a bar. So he was sort of explaining, yes, I was complicit. Yes, I, you know, I didn't, you know, I should have stood up, which he should have because Ariana was his friend. But he was like, I just had no bandwidth to like care that much. And my whole life is not this man. But the show made it seem like that. Now, do I wish that Schwartz, after finding out about the affair, told Ariana, yes, yes. But did I feel bad for him at the reunion? Slightly. I mean, like he didn't have the affair. His friend did. And like, I, I just think about if my best friend was like having an affair and it was a messy one, I would be telling her that you need to come clean. But I don't think I would, I don't think I I would stab her in the back on that. I think I would cover for her. I wouldn't be happy and it would probably affect our friendship and our relationship. But yeah, if my best friend was having a torrid affair and it involved our friend group, I mean, that's messy and I would be super pissed. But would I rat her out? 
I don't think so. And I guess that would make me complicit. I'm not justifying his behavior. He's a turd. And when Katie said that, um, I think he likes, I think he liked me, but he didn't love me. Oh my God. Oh, geez, Louise. Anyways. I'm attracted to Schwartz. I know it's not right, but I'm here and I'm I'm living in it and I'm reveling in it. And um, let me know if you know you're feeling it too, because I think at times like this we really need to lean into community. Okay, this one I wanted to say, and then we'll we'll move on to a different show. The amount of visceral hate that was slung at Raquel was a lot, and I am not a person who is uncomfortable in conflict. Like I grew up in conflict. I understand it. I'm not, you know, I'm not ever entering a friendship or um, romantic relationship or anything where I don't think at some point we are going to have a disagreement that may involve louder talking, let's say. Let's say, but this reunion like was so screamy, was so yelly, was so intense and anger fueled, which was understandable, but it was to a point where like there were times where I felt kind of bad for Raquel, um, which I know she did something terrible. I also think she's in a very manipulative relationship with Tom Sandoval. Tom Sandoval. Thank you, Ken. But yeah, I I felt really bad for her. And I was reading that they had shot that reunion, I think like three weeks or something after the affair. So this was the first time Ariana was seeing Raquel. So it makes sense that she was super angry. I mean, I would be livid. And so when, you know, she told um, Raquel to uh, fuck herself with a fucking cheese grater, I was like, damn, that's intense. But I get it. Uh, you're upset. Um, but it was really intense. And so with Lala and James, I thought James was just kind of annoying by the end of the reunion. He had no real like reason to be so involved and he kept getting up and leaving. And I just felt like James and Lala were just trying to make themselves a bit relevant in the reunion, which I wanted to say, y'all are both really funny and we've liked you this season, but like pump the brakes. Also like Lala has like rewritten so much of her story, which she kind of got called out on a little bit at the reunion. But again, it was only about Scandoval. So there was no space to like really call someone else out. And when Tom Sandoval would, everyone just tell him to shut the fuck up, which agreed. But I digress. They really went at Raquel. And I know that she had no reaction and everyone kept calling her a sociopath. I don't think I would call her a sociopath. She was like clearly disassociating or just like completely detached from reality, which was strange and bizarre. But I just don't think she understood the gravity of the situation. And of course she deserves, you know, there's consequences to actions, but I just thought, damn, it was like so mean. It was so, oof, it was so, I mean, I, she took it all and apologized and I would have been truly a puddle of mud. I don't know why I brought that band up. Do you miss them? Anyways, I would be a puddle on the floor. I would be devastatoed. And I know she got called out for like, la like when her and Tom Sandoval were laughing in the green room. And I'm like, damn, like she had just been screamed at for hours. Like, I think you would, I think your body and your mind would just try and find any point of humor or any, any different emotion to feel. Again, I'm not making excuses, but I just thought, whoa, she really got it. And in such an intense way, just a special shout out to Lisa Vanderpump, who really made herself known in the reunion by being a very surprised great aunt. Like when she was like, oh my God, you dress like Raquel during Halloween. It's preposterous. Loved that. Loved that. Her and her Dolce Gabbana gown, which Kim Kardashian wore during the, the Dolce campaign, which we will slightly get into. Okay, very quickly, that's my sort of thoughts on Vanderpump. I mean, they're not unique. They're not, you know, they're not mind blowing, but I thought the reunion could have been better. I really was more impressed with the discourse on TikTok and YouTube and like all the podcasts. So if you are looking to get into something, you sort of missed your boat of the excitement of Scandal where we were all talking. Like I literally was shopping with a friend and was explaining to her Scandal. And another woman was like, oh my God, are you talking Scandal? And you know, we all, we all want to be connected, I think. And so when we can connect on things like that, I think we as a community of people unite and we certainly did unite. And we'd like to thank Tom Sandoval for being a total fucking piece of shit and orchestrating that. 
Team Ariana all the way. I, I would recommend going back to season one and rewatching. It is truly a group of terrible people in their 20s and quite truly in their 30s that they don't want to talk about. But it is, it's intense. So if you're not ready for screaming, yelling, and a bunch of rowdiness, don't do it. If you want recommendations for television shows, or if you're like looking on like what to get into, what to dip a toe on, um, you can obviously comment below, or you can comment um, if you're listening to this. You can message me on my Instagram, my TikTok, and you can also sign up for my weekly newsletter, which will just be a summation of all of this. So if I ever talk about products or links to shows or blee blee blah blah, it'll all be there. And um, you can um, send me an email or a little voicemail if you need. So let me know. Really quickly, I want to touch base on two more quick reality TV show things. And one is Real Housewives of New Jersey. Now, let me tell you, this season kind of stunk. It wasn't great. It's the same old, same old with Teresa and Melissa, the Gorgas versus the Judiches. But the reunions were crazy. And I think they were better than Vanderpump. And I love New Jersey. I just recently got into New Jersey like two years ago. And my recommendation, if you want to dip a toe into a like Real Housewives franchise, is pick a season you've heard great things about and watch the latest reunion. And it'll it'll like basically summarize that season. And if you're like, oh, I'm into this, then just go back and watch that season and then go back into the later seasons if you really like that that season, if that makes sense. I keep saying season, but let's move on to another season. But New Jersey is awesome. It is truly unbelievable. Please start from season one. Again, it's like real family members, real friends. They all know each other. So it it has this more like united feel where some Real Housewife franchises like Salt Lake feel like complete strangers that are just like hanging out together and trying to justify friendships. But New Jersey is is really, really good. But Teresa Giudice has just gotten married to this guy named Louie, who is allegedly, but you know, not allegedly. He's like, uh, he's so scary. He is like, he got a private investigator, is investigating everybody. Like it's so intense. And so it's worth rewatching the season. I gave up and because of the reunions, I'm now going back to watch this season, but it's really, really, really good. And this reunion had me like gasp. It was really wild. Like Louie had family members that weren't on the show investigated. Like everyone had these thick manila envelopes of proof. And like Louie would be like, yeah, that's my phone number. Yeah, that's my, that's my thing. Oh no, I, but I didn't do that. He's wild. It's unbelievable. And I, and it was interesting to see Teresa Judice in a, or Judice, Judice, Judice. Let's move on. It was nice to see Teresa kind of like get it. You know, I know there's a lot of like you know, Teresa stands out there. And I always think it's wild to like pick a favorite housewife because like you can have a favorite and I've had favorites. And then the next season I'm like, they're the villain. No, thank you. That's the whole point. And that's why I love reality TV. It's like, it's like real life soap opera, heavily produced. But it was cool to see Teresa finally like people fighting back because I thought that whole, like her whole bullying thing was just getting really old. Anyways, if you're looking for a little spice and, and you want something that's not as like intense as a Vanderpump Rules, do a... New Jersey, it's still full of yelling. I can't imagine how much vacation time Andy Cohen will need based off those two full reunions. He screamed so many times in the New Jersey reunion for people to shut up and they never did. I digress, but it's very good. The last thing I want to talk about really quickly as far as shows goes is the Kardashians. And then I want to get into a product. Okay. I just want to get into a little, a little, a little product. Now I haven't been watching the Kardashians this season. I've been trying, but like they film so late. Like we already know what's true and what's not true. Also like it's so produced. It is like beyond produced that I just, it's just, it's too lame. Unless I want to watch something like glitzy glammy like I just want to watch like sometimes it's nice just to watch the Kardashians to see like their beautiful homes their outfits like it feels like you're watching like I don't know just the richest people in the world like just like walking around in like six like six inch stilettos like it makes no sense the Kardashians like they're just boring now and I I fear they're becoming irrelevant right? They were it for a while. Like, oh my gosh, Kylie's lips. How did she do it? Not plastic surgery. Couldn't have been that. It's got to be these crayons for your mouths. That time was thrilling. It was wild. You know, Kim taking, you know, an x-ray on her butt to show that she didn't have implants, even though it's just fat transfer and that doesn't show up, which is a thing I had to look up once. But um, now they're just so rich and they're so curated. And Kim 
you know, Kim, Chloe, Courtney, they've all got brand new faces, especially Chris. I think it's still settling. She'll get there. Yeah, it's just not for me. It's just not about anything. And I think the frustration I have is like, I just don't like Courtney. And every, I know there's some people being like, she's leaving her toxic family. It's like, yeah, okay. But Courtney is so annoying. So it's like, even the fight now I'm seeing between Kim and Courtney. Courtney has never worked really. And like, and she's, she makes money off this show. And I know the argument I'm hearing and I'm seeing it that like she bled out for like so many seasons, like with the Scott thing, like her, her relationship with Scott, like I know she gave a lot. So it's like fine for her to step back, but like, I just think she's annoying and I'm just over it. Okay. Reality TV is done. I attempted to talk about their Kardashians, um, but then I got so bored with what I was talking about. But if you want to hear me talk about the Kardashians this season, just send me a message. But I, I'm definitely going to probably cut it out because I literally yawned while, while discussing it. The last thing I want to talk about is a product. On this pod, I want to talk about things I love and I, I'm not sponsored. Okay. Would I love if they, if they liked what I said and sent me something? Of course. But I'm, I use this. You'll see by the dust bag. It's disgusting. Okay. If you're looking to treat yourself, I want to talk about this. This will sound like a commercial, whatever. Everyone move on, Denise, move on. The first product, if I, I was thinking, what should like the first sort of a recommendation be? And I, it has to go back to like my, one of my OG recommendations. And that is my LED face mask. Okay. Friends, I'm going to grab it. If you're watching this, you're seeing me reach. Look at this dusty ass, nasty ass bag. Omnilux, if you're watching this, obviously, um, how, do, how can I, how can I, how can I keep this? How can I store this in not such a nasty, well-used bag? I love the Omnilux. Let me describe my skin. I have had in the past, I've had cystic acne, but I wouldn't say I'm acne prone. Um, when I moved to LA, um, my whole life crumbled before me. So that might've explained the mountainous cesspools that were on my forehead, my chin, um, and my, what I called acne sideburns. But currently like I'll get like a huge pimple. Like there's one here on my forehead that the mask helped, but like but for me, my main issue is discoloration. I have a lot of redness. And uh, since being in my 30s, I'm currently 37. These are the best days As uh, I've gotten into my 30s, I've noticed a lot more wrinkles, which like, you know, happens. So I was looking around because when I'm about to buy skincare products, I do my research because everyone, as we know, Everyone on freaking TikTok, everyone on Instagram, everyone on social media is like pushing and plugging shit. And you're like, but are they telling the truth? Also, sorry, gals, sorry for the young ones, but like, I do not trust a 20 year old telling me what to put on my face. Who are you? Who are you? You're not talking to me. Would you be? Really? Jessica? No, no, no. Too young. So um, I kept seeing LED masks everywhere and everyone's saying it reduces wrinkles. It um, even so skin tone. It helps with redness, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, because I love a self-care moment. I mean, I just talked 20 minutes about getting an iPad. Like I love, I love a routine as I'm getting in my thirties. I love, and I feel like everyone deserves like a luxuriating routine, especially nighttime or morning, like taking that moment to like really like get into your skincare, get into, get into your, like your robe, like whatever that is, it, it really is, I think a really special and important thing that everyone should implement into their lives, not to get too deep about skincare. However, these freaking masks are expensive. They're really expensive. This one was like $450, I think with tax Canadian. And you know, it, it's it's a lot. So this is like an investment. So if I'm going to invest, like I'm going to do my damn research. And there were two YouTube channels and TikToks um, that stood out to me. And one was YouTube called like Doctorly. I wanted to know if the science was true. Like can LED lights like really help you? And I'm here to say like these dermatologists on this YouTube channel and they weren't paid. They weren't even talking about this brand quite frankly, but they were saying like there is truth in LED face masks. And essentially these masks help regenerate collagen underneath your skin. Like it helps like boost collagen. Cause you know, when you, I don't know if you're like me, but like taking like 
collagen powder. Like that's bullshit. That's not doing anything. Vital proteins is like a trillion dollars. Um, I've definitely uh, paid for it. And then was like, this did nothing for me, for me, I'll say. But they were saying there was like legitimate science behind that. And then, so I started researching like who has the best LED, like the strength, like for at home, blah, blah, blah. And I came across a YouTube channel that I would love to shout out. And her name is Angie and her YouTube channel is hot and flashy. And she is a woman, I believe in her fifties. And that's who I want to talk to. That's who I want to watch. Like when I'm on TikTok, like those are the women I want to listen to. Women in their 40s, women in their 50s, women in their 60s. Like I want to talk to those women and see what they're using because that's where I'm headed. You know, like the, they have what what their needs are, are my needs currently as well. So Angie from Hot and Flashy did this full breakdown on the mask. And she did like a full, full, full breakdown on like who has the stronger LEDs, why that's important. She provided before and afters and it was unbelievable. And then I looked up more on Omnilux and it was just like the no brainer. And also Angie had a code. Okay. And I'm not an influencer. This is a future Stacy talking. Hi, how are you? I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you're watching this, um, could my office get um, any more drab? Yes. Yes, it could. Uh, I'm currently trying to like set it all up. So if you're watching this, you're seeing me and my emotional dog sorting it out. I am here because something really exciting has happened. Let's unpack. So basically what happened was I shot the first episode of the podcast. And as I was editing it, as you see me in my wham Christmas t-shirt currently, at the end of editing, I was like, what if I just get a little bold and reach out to Omnilux and tell them, hey, I really love this freaking mask. Do you have referral codes, affiliate code? Do you have something that I could potentially give to my listeners for this new podcast? So I told them who I was, how much I love the mask, told them about the podcast, and that I was wondering if they would do that. Of course, not expecting a single thing. Now, here is what is so freaking exciting. They responded back. In what world do you uh, does that ever happen? They responded back and they were like, hey, we love that you love the mask. Here is an affiliate uh, link. And here is a 10% off code for the listeners of your podcast. Have fun. Have fun with it. Spread the word of Omnilux. And I was like, what? Ask and you actually shall receive? So all that to say... I am Jimmy Jazzed to the absolute max to tell you that my boldness here has uh, gotten everyone here listening or watching this a 10% off code for the Omnilux. If you use Stacy 10, <laughs> can you believe? Stacy 10, uh, it'll get you 10% off the Omnilux mask. And let me tell you, I used a code um, and I use the link from Hot and Flashy's Angie. So uh, down below, you'll see an affiliate code. Yes, that means I get a, a kickback from any purchase and use that if you want or don't use it if you, you don't want. I don't I don't know your, your ethical quandaries, but um, if you want, you can just use my link right below and get yourself a, an Omnilux, easy peasy, lemon full squeezy. Can you believe 10% off if you use Stacy 10 will get you 10% off an Omnilux mask? I, 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 I'm Gagatrondred right now. Gagatrondred, easy to say, fun in the mouth. So um, again, and we'll get back to the, the episode, but if you, um, if you are on the fence about the Omnilux and you, um, and listen, the Omnilux is a pretty penny, so why not remove some of those pennies? You know, they're, they're heavy pennies. And uh, again, right across the screen here or down below, you can get 10% off your mask at Stacey 10. So enjoy the Omnilux and enjoy the episode. There's so much I would change about that outfit and my current outfit, but um, here we are and um, live, love, laugh live, laugh, live, live, love, laugh, Julia Roberts. The Omnilux. Let me pull it out of the bag. I love the Omnilux. It's amazing. Um, here's why I liked Omnilux. Um, it, I know there's way more on the market since I bought this. I've had this for now, I guess over a year. 
well over a year. I've recommended this to so many friends who have bought it themselves. Um, their skin looks amazing. Um, there is proof in the pudding, like literally so shiny, so bouncy, so amazing. I've had friends who have had, you know, acne, ba- like acne um, t- prone. There it is. Thank you, brain. Acne prone skin. I've had friends who are dealing um, with texture, which aren't we all. And they've definitely seen results and as have I. Certainly my discoloration has gone down. And the benefit of also this mask is um, it helped my eyelashes grow like to the point where like now when I wear mascara, people are like, what's the deal with your eyelashes? And I'm like, it's the Omnilux. The LED really helps. Also the LED helps like sort of heal wounds or like pimples. So if you have a huge pimple, it will kind of reduce it. I've also found success using this um, because I'm not scared to say I'm prone to cold sores sometimes. And especially in the winter or with, if it's really, if my lips are exposed to sun. And if I do have a cold sore, this thing freaking zaps it right down. If I'm like, every day diligent about it, it'll take it right down. So I have found nothing but pluses with this thing and I've had it forever. And the only thing I wish it had was a better bag <laughs> to hold it in. Cause again, my dusty crusty bag, when you pull it out is, um, it's not the most luxurious feeling, but, um, what I like about it is it's silicone. It fits right around your face. You can also, if you wanted to use it for your neck, I know they have neck and, um, hand applications, but that th- those are also expensive. So if it's not in your budget, the benefit with the silicone is you can put it over your neck and you can put it on your hands or any sort of like problem area that you feel you have that I'm sure all your friends would go, what are you talking about, Janelle? You're beautiful. But I love the Omnilux. So if you're looking to like treat yourself, I would say get yourself a goddamn LED face mask, get in robe, put on this podcast, listen to it. Basically, you just put on your face and then it's 10 minutes. And here's what I love. Like, again, I'm not, I am a person who doesn't have a problem going to sleep, but this this before bed, this will this will take you there. So you put this on, red light, 10 minutes. Okay. And it's a dream and a joy and a wish. And you all deserve really nice things. And I'm telling you, multiple friends have bought this after hearing from me and they have then since told their friends. So the spider web of Omnilux purchases from my recommendation is vast. And you best believe that when friends tell me that they got their friends to buy it, I'm like, well, you better tell them where you heard it from. You better tell them where you heard it from. So get yourself the Omnilux. And Omnilux, if you're listening to this, hi. Well, anyways, friends, I guess that brings us to the end of the first ever Indulge Me episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you like this, subscribe. You can rate it as well. I know people do that. Follow along for more. Also, if you have like themes or things you want recommendations for, please send them my way. Like I said, you can follow me on Instagram. You could message me below on this video. Thank you so much for watching. Where will this journey take us? Simply and utterly cannot wait um, to look back at this first episode and went and think, oh gosh, you should have put in your clip in extensions, but you didn't. I adore you all. Thank you. And I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.